everyone. Croeso uh, This is a question time with the Scarlets again. We hope that you enjoyed uh, last week's episode um, with Rob Evans. Uh, we uh, have another special guest uh, today, as you're aware. Uh, it's uh, Scarlets head coach. It's Mr. Uh, Brad Moore. So really looking forward to this one. We've had a great, great response again on uh, on social uh, media. But uh, first of all, Brad, how have you been? How are the boys doing in in lockdown, and what have you been up to? Shmai, um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Um, look, uh, it's been a funny old time, hasn't it? And everyone's experience in it. But uh, we've had a couple of weeks now of of the of the the lockdown and isolation. And and uh, look, we, we're we're fine. We're we're doing well. The family's sort of adjusted to the rhythm. I think the kids have probably had. Um, their two weeks holiday of Easter first, and and then we might get into some form of schooling. But I don't think we're putting ourselves under too much pressure around that. And if we get uh, if they get some good life lessons in and whatnot, then uh, then they'll be doing well. We're picking it up. But uh, the boys have been outstanding. The, st the staff and boys as well, in terms of staying connected, as much as we're as isolated as we've ever been physically as a team and as a race, aren't we? Um, that uh, through the wonders of uh, WhatsApp and, and social media, et cetera, we, we're, we're as connected as we've ever been, if not slightly more. There's some awesome characters coming through on the, on the, uh, on the team WhatsApp and, and uh, little challenges and mini team games and skill sets being practiced and, and whatnot. And I'm just really proud of, of the, the group and, and, and players and staff as to how they've responded to, well, let, let's continue the connection that we've built and that what we've, um, what we've set our season up on, which is, which is being united and, 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 and people first and, and, uh, and caring for each other. And, and that's continued on seamlessly, albeit that we're, uh, we're doing it from uh, individual places. Yeah, great. So you've been keeping the, uh busy as a group of uh, a group of people um there ha there's been a few things on on tv of late one of which was the um the replay of the pro 14 semi final a couple of years ago did you uh, did you see that well i've seen plenty of it before and and uh yeah i saw snippets of it again i think it's great that these sorts of things are being replayed um magnificent moments and and our club and other clubs' histories, aren't they, of those sorts of uh, shows that are on and um, just shows uh, how important sport is to a culture and, and to its people and, and pulling together and providing those um, moments of teamness and, 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 and joy, which, uh, which are magnificent. And I think obviously we've hit the pause button at the moment and, and quite rightly so and, and everyone hopefully doing the right thing around um, trying to flatten this curve and and uh, and get coronavirus under control. It's a, probably a good time also just to press pause and, and take time out individually and, and, and as family units and say, well, actually, what's really important to us and how, how what are we going to learn from this to go forward? And, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, What's happening now is normal for the circumstances. It's not the old normal, and it won't be the new normal. There'll be there'll be some changes, and look forward to seeing what those opportunities bring once we once we get through this pretty uh, very very tough time, and obviously tough time for those who are, who are sick and critically sick and passing away. Yeah, of course. And uh, thoughts uh, uh, with all those uh, who are suffering from from the illness. Obviously, everyone at the Scarlets uh, here. You're in people's thoughts, um, but moving on uh, into some rugby issues. Moving into the into the questions, uh, we've got a Carwin Thomas on Twitter. Uh, first up, uh, it's a pretty big one. It's what's your favourite memory of the season? Oh, um, so many, so many great memories. Uh, one of the, one of the special memories is uh, is our experience out in Toulon when. Um, it took 90 minutes for Toulon to get over top of us. Um, obviously, he had a red card to, to Tex, and he'd been outstanding in, in the first half. Uh, one of the best performances of second row I've seen at, at our level. And um, 
and I, I just I remember coming in at half time, it was all happening around half time and sort of standing around the tunnel and his teams are coming off and, and Steph Hughes led the way off and he was so engaged and fired up and positive about where we could take the game that uh, it left me in absolutely no doubt that that we were in good hands to be able to give this a hell of a shake and, and um, boys responded superbly. Uh, like I say, it took it took the 90 minutes um, for Toulon to, to to exert the pressure to, to get over top of us and you know well deserved by them as well but that, that memory of Steph in the tunnel and, and also of the supporters afterwards was was just amazing um, to have uh, that, that many supporters in our hotel that have had traveled uh, at that stage as well there was a bit of a strike going on of um, air traffic controllers or um, staff of, of some respect that meant that people had to change their flights and they were busing, driving, flying, busing again and massive effort by people to, to come watch. And they were in our hotel, which is just a walk across the the um, well, the path, the, the yard from the hotel to the to the ground at Toulon. And, uh, and they were singing as we went out and they were singing as we came back in. And, very very humbling moment because you've you've given your all and you're desperate to win and, and you know that you want to put on a show for your people and for them to still be as uh, connected and, and proud of of the effort um having lost was was just outstanding and that's a there's a special memory that still brings goosebumps uh, to the skin yeah it's a it's a great place uh, great place to go and, and and watch rugby it's an incredible uh, experience and different this time it was poured in with rain the, the, the times we've been out there it's been nice and nice and sunny but i guess as a coach if you can take a, a step back and and you can see players taking uh, control of situations i guess that's what you want to try and achieve mate 100 percent gar and and i think um the, the, our, our group was, has been outstanding all season. Um, we've had players in and out. And there'd, there'd be some questions about about uh, the internationals and 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 whatnot. And I was, um, our, our whole group has stayed totally united right through. So the whole squad, whether we've been partially in Japan at the World Cup and back here working whether we've been in, in Six Nations or preparing for Barbarians games or, or whatever the case may be. Um, 20s, the 20s campaign, is superb watching guys play for the country and, and also really proud of how the group has um, has celebrated each other's successes and used them to, to energise themselves and, and fulfil their, their, um, um, their ability and promise. So... Um, to see that was just brilliant, and you mentioned that normally you've been out to Toulon and it's been sunny, and and uh, well, obviously we're not we're not playing any footy now this season at the moment, and the sun's come out, and it would have been magnificent to get a few more games in this sort of weather. With our group, is certainly made for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, talking of um, you moving on from the Scarlet, so Wayne Rhys Davis on Twitter says, hi Brad, would you recommend that future All Blacks on the fringes of the national team take sabbaticals with teams like the Scarlets, given the style of play played and the wealth of experience that could be gathered? And is this something that could be encouraged in the future? Gosh, uh, awesome question and well put together. I like it. Um, uh, Just an example of of our learned fan base, isn't it? it's uh yeah look I'm all for the ability for people to to go and learn different experiences and and, and whatnot I've coached in New Zealand South Africa and and Wales now and having been in Wales and coached against English sides Irish sides Welsh Scottish French Italian um you, you do start to actually see the, the differences in the way that each team and country sort of sees the game and I think those experiences are superb and it's not just players coming this way to, to learn those experiences, it's ability for players to go the other way as well and, and whatnot. And hey, maybe maybe that's one of the, the reset buttons that gets pushed with mm. what we've been forced into now is the ability for people to put 
egos and politics and, and agendas aside and, and actually talk about a, uh, a global season or, or what, what we could make our game look like uh, if we were given the opportunity to say we're almost a clean slate, what could this look like? And, and uh, that may provide those sorts of opportunities, but that, that excites me. I've learned so much by traveling even outside of rugby. We lived over here 20 years ago. Um, just on the on the overseas experience, working in London and travelling around, and the, the amount that you learn about yourself and others just by uh, meeting different cultures and living in them is amazing. Lived in Spain for a couple of years as well. Played a couple of seasons there in the north of Spain in Santander, and oh, just just magnificent. And how does uh, how does Hendy compare with Santander in London? <laughs> it's just another Riviera, isn't it? I'm looking out over the Bont now, and I can. <laughs> Um, I can see uh, see the water and the estuary and the um, Eleven Arches Bridge. It's um, it's amazing that things. I've been just watching the M4 out here too. We had actually had a moment the other day, and there was one for one moment. There was not one car on our bit of the M4 that we can see, and um, sort of tells you where we're at. But it also tells you that people are staying home and 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 doing the right thing and and uh, and getting to know each other better. I mean, you, you, your, uh, your lawns and, and, your, and your edges, I'm sure, are, are looking better than ever. <laughs> yeah, the lawns, they've been fed and they've been weeded and uh, they've been cut and trimmed and the walls have been painted. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad I got this thing, that uh, a chance to speak to you to drag me away from the lawn. My back is killing me. <laughs> Moving on to rugby anyway, Brad. Clark Gilmore on Facebook um, wants to know what you made of the Six Nations as a competition up until the point it was uh, postponed. Yeah, great competition, isn't it? Really iconic, um, followed closely around the world. Um, I think uh, it showed showed various uh, ways of the, of the game being played. You had guys like sort of, uh, DuPont, who's just outstanding for France. Mm. Any, any anyone that can keep Siren on the on the bench anyway is going pretty good, and uh, um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the nationality, the the, the 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 whole tribalism around it. And I think one thing that you you've got uh, here that that's really special is, and this is the same with our with our regional game is we get travelling supporters. So in, when it's Wales, England, and and Twickenham. There's there's plenty of Welsh support there, and and it's actually a stadium. It's not quite fifty fifty, is it? But but the ability for people to travel to the games is, is easier because it's not as much. It's, it's a closer uh, closer environment. The travel's not as far, and in, and in a lot of cases, you, you don't actually have to leave the ground to the the land, you know, the earth to 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 do that. You're not flying. So um, I, I love that the singing. Um, all of that, that stuff's magnificent that surrounds it and the, the rugby itself it's passionate um, see some genuine sort of test match um, pressure think of England Scotland at Murrayfield in the in the hurricane uh, weather that we, we played the day after didn't we and, and um, is uh, Incredible that it's just um, it was basically one pass plays and but you know some similar conditions to when we played Edinburgh, so um, you know the adapting and uh, the, you had number of coaching changes and across the Six Nations, so it was just uh, just fascinating to watch how different sides put their game together. And it can be, I guess, frustrating for you, um, which is. What Hayden Davis on Twitter was uh, asking, really, and how frustrating has it been not being able to field a host of quality international players this season due to World Cup commitments, injuries, Six Nations? Yeah, good question, Hayden. I think that um, uh, not, not, not so much frustrating because that, that's an emotion that, that we choose to, to show. So I think if, if you get frustrated about something, that's your own that's your own response. So none of it's a surprise. We knew that that is the case. Um, you work really hard to, to get alignment with the, with the national coaches. 
uh, on, on what that can look like. I think players in, players out through the Six Nations is, is a, um, a, a, it can become a bit of a, um, an, an issue to deal with that, that you, need to, you need to just really keep really close, open lines open with the players and, and, and the players that are in the squad as well that you're working with at the club to, to ensure that communication's really clear on, on where people are at and, and who might be coming back in to your team for a game, um, maybe maybe it would work better in, in in Six Nations if there's a Six Nations block that didn't have any regional rugby going on at the same time, and it's just a nice clean block. Mm. Go stay focused on that, um, and and we work something else out to do at the time. Maybe that's one of those things that can come out of this uh, this situation. But look, we, we're, we're like I say, none of it's a surprise. And you and you and make sure that we've got a squad, and that's one of our important things that we've tried to build this year is a squad that can work through that and 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 handle that, and and easily integrate people in and out and celebrate the successes of, of people playing for their country. It's a huge honour, huge honour that that we must never ever be uh, upset about or frustrated about, and and continue to celebrate. The more the more people playing for Wales, the better, um, and. I'd love to see the whole squad in there playing for Wales. I'm sure they do a great job too, but uh, um, and it'd be, there'd be something to celebrate. So uh, it's, it's been been a nice challenge, and I, I think the side's done really well throughout the whole the whole season with it. Great, uh, Tom McCarthy on Facebook. Uh, what aspects of Welsh rugby surprise you the most? Uh, the good and not so good. And what one thing would you change in world rugby if you were king for the day? <laughs> well, the, the, to take the second part. Um, if I was king for a day and, and had the ability to, to make a change, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking for that, that global season. Yeah. Um, get some real good clarity on what the windows look like, the international windows. Um, have people working working really closely together for the good of the game, not necessarily for, for, the, for the good of their own entity. Um, I think that, that, uh, that, that we are actually provided with a great opportunity to be able to do something like that. Um, what surprised me the most? Um, oh, the, 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 the connection with the fans is just outstanding, and the, and the passion, the passion and, and loyalty from them um, has been magnificent. Not, not so much uh, surprise; it's just a, just a lovely, lovely bonus. Um, I think along the way, um, before coming over, I had a lot of people who wanted to tell me that oh, you'll find the players different. Um, you know, you have to coach differently. They won't speak up. Um, etc. And uh, and it did, you make sure that you always do do your homework and ask people. It gives you a good perspective. But the old ABC of of life in terms of assuming nothing, believing nothing, and confirming everything is um, it's probably to the fore. Because once you've got over here and and start to build a relationship with our group and through our coaches and and staff who have been superb and really open and um, set up an environment that's help out, not catch out. That, that is, uh, we found that the players have been so engaged, so eager to learn, they're really well educated on the game. Uh, they care about the jersey and each other. Uh, they want to get better all the time and, and, uh, and, and move the conversation to how can we do this better and, and allow yourselves to be vulnerable and, and us included and say, geez, we, we got that wrong. I've found that the players have just been absolutely superb and, and no different in terms of, of the way that they want to grow themselves and, and, and grow us and, and together just, um, just get better and better. So it's been, it's been awesome. I've got to, um, got to take you back to the first part of that question because it's cropped up a couple of times regarding the global season. How, does the ideal global season look to you? What sort of structure would that would that take? Um, we've not been the king for a day. Haven't put a hell of a lot of uh, of thought <laughs> into 
that knowing that my position influence is not major. The idea is great, and I think that um, what I'd look for is windows. So, so make clear windows. We saw rugby league shift uh, over here to to a February to what July August type, yeah. type season. Yeah. Um, I think that, that that's that's the sort of thing that I'd look for. So that the test windows across the world are are at the same time. The 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 regional competition. So whether it's it's um, Pro 14, uh, Super Rugby. Um, uh, premiership, the the French mm. uh, top fourteen, etc. They're aligned, so that there, there becomes less of a, 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 a. It depends on structures across the world, obviously, but it becomes less of a club and country conversation. I, I think that uh, I think that there, there has to be room to be able to do that. Um, could you imagine playing your footy in in this sort of weather? on top of the ground, uh, people coming out, uh, filling the stadiums, sun on the back, uh, just be, just be superb. So shift, perhaps shifting the, that, that the calendar a bit to, uh, to allow for maybe a bit more footy into the summer. It's, I know there's social issues and there's all sorts of other things that come with that and other sports as well. But uh, at the same time, you think about what's best for our game. There might be uh, there might be an answer in there. Yeah, I agree with you as a as an expat free player. Uh, definitely summer rugby. I know I used to play with Vernon Cooper in the second row, uh, and he used to love the rain. So I didn't know he would be dead against it. But uh, personally, as a back three player, I'd uh, I'd be all over all over summer rugby. Um, but Dylan Jones on Facebook, uh, who is the one player you'd like to see at the Scarlets and why? Ooh. Ooh. Playing now. The one current yeah. player. Yeah. If you had an open checkbook. It's a it's it's a hell of a question, isn't it? Because we've got um players across the park who are superb and you sometimes I think about these questions and people interpret them. If you bring someone in, it means you want to send someone out, but yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll keep everyone in, and uh, for the fun of the question, um, I love the way I love the way Brody Retallick plays the game. Um, physical, skillful, ability across the park. I think that uh, I think that he'd he'd be a superb uh, addition to the, to the wonderful second row stocks that we've also got. Uh, now, um, you know, we've had a, an awesome back row, haven't we? You, you get someone with the energy of an Artie Savier or a Dwayne Vermeulen. Um, mm. that, that's quite quite uh, mouth-watering. But look, I find these uh, this wonderful players all over the place. And I, I, I think still be a, probably be a question about who would you want to take the other way, and and um, that's when you you, you think about. We haven't we haven't managed to to see um, Jonathan Davis, um, James Davis, uh, Reese Patchell, Liam Williams uh, in our in our jersey yet, and uh, I, I just what I what I'd give to be able to be involved in the game with, with with those guys all all playing and available, let alone worrying about who you who you'd want to bring in from. Uh, from outside, uh, that 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 gets me gets me more excited. Um, those guys have uh, they you know they work so hard for the club and and it, it was been wonderful to have uh, to have been involved in a game where they were playing, but um, not to be yet. But we don't know what's happening in the in the next uh, month or so. No, and Lucy Davis on Facebook is ahead of you on this one actually. So she's asking which current Scarlets player would you take back? With you for the All Black squad. Well, if they're going for the All Black squad, it'd have to be a Kiwi, wouldn't they? They've got to be eligible. Uh, well, yeah, no, you can, we'll we'll do away with uh, international rugby laws at the moment yeah. and rules and oh, regulations. We we're quite, we're quite clean there. Yeah. Um, 
Look, uh, there's, there's the obvious ones are the guys that I've just just uh, just named. Um, Ryan Elias is a really athletic um, hooker who would thrive in in the Southern Game as well. I'm, I'm sure, and I, I love also. Um, you know, imagine Steph Evans on a on a hard deck. Yeah, mm. uh, that's hard ground uh, uh, consistently and. Do you know what? Oh, I do do love the the wee the still wee thing there in the back of the mind about Josh McLeod and his uh, physicality and and intent and and, uh, and and what he brings and does so well here. His physicality at the ruck and his decision making is really on the up, and he's he's had a superb season. I, I think that he would bring an edge and a point of difference in in the in the Southern Hemisphere. Good, great answer. Um, and I suppose that leads on to what Rodri on Twitter wanted to know as well, which, if any players surprised you in a positive manner as to thinking that they'd play differently to what you would uh, what you were expecting? Well, I think, again, um, I appreciate the question. And I, it's not so much about surprise. It's just that give people the opportunity to show to show their best and 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 be comfortable that that they're in an environment that that's going to is not is not looking to to punish errors. It's like to say, well, geez, that was a great effort to do that. How how can we do better? Like, um, and make them comfortable. And you've seen guys just uh, have superb seasons. Steph Hughes has hardly missed a minute. Um, He's led us superbly. His skill set is wonderful. Um, he he sees the game before before most of us, and uh, and his ability to lead and get people to follow him and play for him has has been superb. And I, I, I'm sure Steph understands that you. you People talk about the Scarlets. They, they're going to rattle, rattle off a number of names before this season. They certainly would have rattled off a number of names before they rattled off Steph's name, and and uh, and and he's he's just been been wonderful. So great to see that. And the likes of Josh McLeod, Cass has has, has um, been a consistent performer for us. Um, uh, yeah. All, all, uh, it's not it's not not a surprise because we expect them to do well and we expect them to be at their best but also um, also love celebrating celebrating the success and consistency of performance great and uh, Sam Reese on Twitter uh, wants to know what's your favorite non rugby related thing about Llanelli slash West Wales oh easy that's a, it's brilliant it's an easy answer it's the people um, I think the people make everywhere, everywhere special or otherwise, and and um, just just awesome people who are bounce around and keen to have a yarn. Um, I've been uh, in the street, the supermarket, wherever it may be, and and um, I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed getting around a couple of rugby clubs and. Uh, cricket clubs and the, when we arrived, um, it's superb. There's uh, there's obviously some lovely places around here. We've done a bit of bit of bit of travelling around and um, tried to get out west a bit, sort of Tembe and and the likes. And uh, and it's it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's a lovely lovely spot, um, special area, and and uh, and wonderful people. Mm. And uh, Scott Cullen on, on Twitter actually was asking, um, where's, where's the nicest place you have visited? <laughs> um, when my neighbour would want me to say the Hindi Rugby Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bont, Bont Rugby Club? In the Bont, absolutely. Yep, great, eh? The rivalry's outstanding, how good. Um, have you, have you, did you oh, hear the... Did you, did you see the, um, uh, or have you heard, we all have doctor's papers, uh, Max Boyce? 
Have you have you have you come across that during your time here? Say that sorry, say that again, Gar. Uh, Max Boyce, um, a great Welsh entertainer. He released an album. I think it's in the seventies. We all have doctors' papers, uh, but it was recorded in Bond Rugby Club. Oh, uh, brilliant. And I can't remember the start of the poem, but there's a great line on it. It says, God practised first in Henley, and then he made the bond. <laughs> Not bad, is it? I see, I've certainly heard a lot of, uh, of Max Boyce singing Sospan Vark and, and, uh, and his 9-3 uh, poem. That's, uh, that's been rammed home, no problem there. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll tell you what, we went, to, we went to St David's. I love the history there. And, uh, and also um, uh, those coastal areas like Satinby and Saundersfoot is um, special stuff. It is, it is special stuff, but I'm, I'm biased. Uh, but we've got one question to finish. It's from Robert Morgan on Twitter. Uh, Hi Brad, thanks for everything. When you're back in New Zealand and someone casually asks you, so what was your time at the Scarlet's like? What would your answer be? Magnificent. Short and sweet, I love it. Yeah, oh, it's been wonderful. It's not over yet, but uh, it's it's been outstanding. Um, everything we've expected. Like I say, the people have been magnificent. You you know what it's like working working for the club. Um, everybody buys in, and uh, and and we we enjoy going to work and and. Look, that's been a massive part of it, obviously, and the, and the family's enjoyed being part of the Hindi and, and Pondita Lice communities and and, uh, and enjoying a, um, a phase in our life that, that's been, been just superb. So, look, it's great. It's magnificent. And hopefully any, any of the, the Scarlet supporters that are travelling to New Zealand at any stage over the next few years uh, sing out and say good day. Good, brilliant. Hey, thanks for your time uh, today, Brad. It's much appreciated. Um, hope everything, uh, everyone is well. Um, and again, um, not just for, for today, but obviously thanks for your, your time, your commitment, uh, your support of the Scarlets uh, this year. Hopefully, we'll still get a, another opportunity to, uh, opportunity to see, see your Scarlets team uh, play uh, before the season finishes. Uh, but Brad, thank you very much. Welcome, Vaga. I hope everybody's safe out there.